Hey folks, okay let's be honest, when was the last time you used a map whilst on foot to get from A to B? Think about that for a second. Now most of you I'd hope have been taught how to conduct some form of route plan, how to read a map and use a compass, but is that actually good enough? I'd argue that it's not. The real skill is to interpret and then visualise. Obviously if you're in a featureless landscape or an area without any visual references you'd be reliant on pacings and bearings. But there's a problem with many inexperienced map readers. They lack the ability of interpretation. They focus on a flat centric route using bearings, symbols and distance. Similar to a chalk line laid out on the ground. In the real world however, straight line movement using compass bearings and pacings over the shortest distance possible doesn't really work. You have to take into account terrain, obstacles and threats. So, with that in mind, here are some things to think about next time you venture out with a map and compass. So, visualisation. You must learn to adopt the skill of visualising the terrain in a three-dimensional context, not only in the planning phase but critically whilst actually out there on the route. You should be constantly creating a mental picture of the terrain and taking notice of your surroundings. Practice visualising and making a mental map if you like, of the terrain en route and remembering your key navigation goals. It could be a bend in the river, corner of a woodland or summit of a hill. And then visualise the point or objective beyond your immediate target in order to gain a better sense of directivity. The expectation of the next feature you see will greatly help your flow of travel and will provide you with some form of error checking and confirmatory key points. So visualize the map coming to life. Next up, error correction. Ensure you factor in some form of method that allows you to notice and quickly correct where you've gone wrong. If not, you'll be walking a lot further than you intend. This can be done with aiming points, expectation and pacing. You must also ensure that you keep a high level of tolerance for deviations from your intended bearing. Some people actually aim off or use features as a handrail, which are good methods. So, features. When out on a route, Try and identify and interpret the terrain features which provide you with visual reference points. The more features, the more difference in terrain, the easier it will become to determine the route. The less features there are, the more reliance you will have to have on bearings and pacings. You'd expect this in places like deserts, dense forest, jungle, or even at night, which can be very disorientating. Be aware though, uh, that may be features that are not on the map which can throw you off, such as spurious farm tracks, forest tracks, or even bodies of water that may either disappear altogether at certain times of year, or swell beyond reason. So, features. Next, is the going good? 
try and structure the route to avoid known or suspected hazard areas. Modern day maps are great and show an amazing map detail but they also fail to show how dense the vegetation actually is or they fail to indicate environmental conditions such as windy places, potential cold spots or sunny versus shaded areas. Pay particular attention to contours and start thinking about how difficult your selected route actually is. Is the going easy? Is the going good? Is it hard? Or will you have to fight through scrubland to get to your next leg? So the going, is it good? Your travel corridor. As you look at the map, ensure you identify natural boundaries, left and right, for instance, which will effectively make your route a corridor of movement, uh, bounded by some form of perimeter which allow you to detect route deviation. This can be as wide as you like or as slim as you like. These could be handrail type features just as roads, tracks, ridges, basically anything that guides you to your destination. Compass and pace counting they're just subsequent checks within the corridor but only in a rough sense. Relying on the skill of terrain association to navigate precisely is the key. Finally ensure you have the right map for the task and understand or comprehend the scale of that map. This is a common problem uh, which occurs with out practice and it will make you either undershoot or overshoot your target as you move. It's all about awareness, relating the map to the ground and having a sense of coherency in your movement. So I hope that has given you something to think about, some steerage points next time you're out with a map and compass. Get out there and get practicing. If you haven't tried it, uh, give orienteering a go. It'll enable you to develop mental, cognitive and uh, on the hoofs planning skills whilst under physical stress and mental pressure. Skills which are extremely important. So, thanks for watching. I'll leave some bullet points at the end as a uh, sequence of events to help you in your navigational planning process. If you've got any further tips, put them in the comments. And until next time, keep training, stay sharp. But above all, good luck. <laughs>